Hey YouTube, Peterbilt Knife Guy. Today, what you see before you are four different knives that I have put on this channel that didn't get much love. Either whether that's in comments or views or just, you know, all together, maybe somebody didn't like it. But I figured let's try to just do them all at once and see what happens. See if we can get a, uh, a better impression this time. So what we're looking at here are four skinning knives three of which are made in the USA, one is made in New Zealand, <laughs> New Zealand. But uh, what we have here is four examples of what I'm gonna call skinning knives. Now, some might call them hunting knives. I'm just gonna label these skinning knives because uh, minus this one, they all have a very upswept point. I don't know if that's really much of a a skinning thing but if you look at this blade right here I'm pretty sure if somebody were to look at this say that's a skinning knife but if you hold these together they have pretty much the same sweep up on the bellies um, this one might be just a little bit more pointy now the benefits of this one might be if you are going in the guts of an animal or skinning or something you're less likely to poke this is not a very pokey knife, being the fact that it's literally built like a spoon. <laughs> you know, it's got this little swedge up here, but it's not sharp at all. It's pretty blunt, actually. But, you know, you're going to have a hard time getting this inside, you know, skin like this, unless you're pushing down. So, I mean, I guess this one probably be a little bit safer to gut a deer or something than this guy to where if you're in there, you can, you can hook with that point and it's it's gonna cut. This is a very pokey knife. This is a little less of a pokey knife, but still pokey, and this one's also pokey too. Both of these knives right here, with these tips on them, are extremely pokey. Uh, you can just see the patina on this guy. This is an old Western F39. I call it the Beetlejuice knife, because <laughs> if you've ever seen the movie Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. It's showtime. You'll know what I'm talking about, but this is a cool old Western full tang knife and it's pretty decent condition. It's seen some love. It's seen some use. Um, I would like to imagine this thing has been through a few animals, but cool old hunting knife, comfortable, easy to use. I imagine for getting in there and doing, you know, fine tasks, this one probably be a little bit on the bigger end for, uh, for skinning, but that's just a good general use hunting knife and Skinner if you have to, I think that'd be a decent candidate. This guy, this is an old Frontier, Imperial Frontier 422. Um, these knives aren't made anymore. Imperial's not around anymore, but these are made in the USA. It is a very chunky knife. It's like a pear, <laughs> it's like a pear with a, uh, with a blade on it, or what is that fruit? Oh God, the wiener fruit. Yeah, that one. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that. But in hand, it's it's really comfortable. But honestly, if you were using this knife, you wouldn't be holding it like this. So the fact that this handle's comfortable like this, duh, I don't know if it does it for me. Um, getting in there, doing this maybe. Uh, you can pinch it. But this handle, just, just to hold it like a knife, comfortable. But you're not going to take a knife like this and go cutting something. If you were in the kitchen, you'd probably be using it like this, you know, or, or food prep or something like this. You'd more than likely hold this knife like this or like this. So not a super comfortable knife, but neat old vintage knife nonetheless. Uh, so I think from oldest is the Western, then the Imperial. Then we got this guy. This is a Silver Stag. It is a, their slab edition Skinner. And the reason it's the slab edition because Silver Stag is known for making handles that are inset into antler, kind of like a, I don't know, like a hidden tang. And these are full tang. So there's slabs of antler, slab edition. Uh, this knife's cool. I bought this on a whim and I kind of regret it. Uh, it's a very pricey knife for what it is, but it is a D2 made in the USA skinning knife with a real, I think these are elk sheds, elk shed uh, horns. I can't remember, they, they use drops. They don't, 
uh, they, they actually go and hunt for drops and buy drops and use them for all their stuff. So no two knives would be the same. The only thing I would have wished they would have done different on this is being the fact that it has this nice little finger choil area here, which this knife like this is more comfortable than this knife. This is like a kukri, but just doesn't feel right. It is like a little mini kukri. It just doesn't feel right in the hand to use that knife like this. But this guy, it does. I could see me holding it the way it's supposed to be held and cutting stuff up. This one, maybe, but the problem is when you're holding it down, you are just barely getting the tip of that knife on there to where when you're holding this one down, you can get a lot more knife contact than this guy. But cool nonetheless, except for I wish they would have radius this handle. They have left some sharp, sharp corners on this when they sanded it down and it's a little uneven and you can feel it in the fingers. So I wouldn't want to use this for very long. There's no jimping and it's a very thick knife next to this Ford. It's a very thick knife, even next to the Imperial and next to the, uh, the Western. But the worst part about it is this also is the only knife with like a real saber grind on it too. This kind of has a partial saber grind, but this thing's more of a convex. Um, it There's no hard transition. There's just a little light glint. So I guess you could call that a a saber grind, but I would say it's it cuts more like a convex. This guy wants to like push. It wants to wedge up in. It's kind of a hollow ground. It's a very, very, very light hollow ground knife and uh it kind of wants to just wedge in and then spread so let's see if i can well let's take a toilet paper tube so this guy right here it wants to see how it wants to like deform and sp it wants to spread apart and see how it's kind of like eating it in the back there but when you take something like this that's more of a uh, convex grind Eh, I guess it kind of does the same thing. This one just feels the cut smoother. Let's try this forward. Let's try this forward. Yeah, look how clean that is. That's just a much cleaner cut. But they're all pretty slicey. So anyways, Western, Imperial, uh, <laughs> Silver Stag, and then this Ford. This is the newest edition. This is probably my favorite one, except for the fact that uh, these two are vintage and this is handmade in the USA. This guy is made in New Zealand. Made in New Zealand. It is, I can't remember the name of the steel, but it's a decent steel. But this knife, for having such a small handle, I could see me chopping. I could see me, I, had to, I did have to put my own jimping in there, so that jimping is done by me. But, um, I can see me using this knife like this for sure. Um, definitely like this. This this knife just seems to be well designed. And it's basically like a, a sharp finger, almost. Sharp finger-esque. But uh, still a decent knife. I like it. A lot of people hate on D2. Um, they say it's too brittle. You know who you are. But not every company that does D2, it does Chinese D2. This is American steel. This is American D2. It's all sourced in the US and you, you pay a price for it, but D2 will hold a good edge at a hard rock well. And uh, you know, I wouldn't be using this knife for boning. I haven't tested this at all to see if it would chip or anything, but we have, uh, I think 1095, 1095 D2 and whatever Sford uses, I can't remember, it was 15 in 20, I believe. I'll put it in here if I'm wrong. But anyways, it's just four little uh, skinning knives that I have. They're kind of small for me, except for this one. Um, but I do like small knives along with big knives. But these sheaths, let's talk about these sheaths for a second while we're nine minutes in. This American uh, Silver Stag came with this well-built leather sheath. Now I did do a bit of modifying on it because it also had a loop, but it had no retention, no way to lock the knife in. And this thing just doesn't want to stay in at all. Um, I'm going to have to do some fixing on that. I would be scared to put my knife on my belt like this because you jump up and that, that knife's coming. You fall down, that knife's coming out. So nice sheath, 
no retention. We'll fix that. The Western, the Western had a sheath that looked exactly like this. I made my own to mimic it because it was just destroyed. This knife wasn't super well taken care of, as you can tell, because this was after cleaning up, but the sheath was well destroyed. So I made my own, I made it exactly the same, but now it's new. So the Beetlejuice knife has <laughs> new shoes. Another one that has terrible retention is this thing. I'm surprised nobody lost this knife because this is the actual sheath it comes with. And it was falling apart because they did two things wrong. This knife is built like a big boomerang. So when you stick it in, where does it want to go? It wants to go right into those stitches, right into those stitches. And that's what happened. Somebody shoved this knife in. It went and cut right through these stitches. There was no welt in here. So I took it apart. I put a welt in and then I restitched it using this the existing holes and then I riveted it because it didn't have rivets. But that welt now will prevent, if you look in there, can see if you can see in there. See that welt? When that blade goes down, it's only gonna touch that welt. It's and it's 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 welted and glued and sewn. So now when you stick it in, it can only go to where it wants to go, and that's it. But the problem is <laughs> make a fool out of me. It still wants to fall out. So I don't know how I could really put a retention strap on this because all it does is just get narrower. <laughs> so stuck on this one, but at least if you were to wear this one, it was, it'd be on your hip. I would still hate to fall or jump out of a tree or something, you know, with this knife on my sheath. And then there's this one for the sword. Now the sword sheath came with this atrocious fire steel loop on here and I, I, I thought I could modify it. I did. It's still stupid. I just cut it off. But this is probably the best sheath for retention. It ain't going to go nowhere. This knife will never leave this sheath unless you want it to. Problem is, if you got slippery, bloody fingers or something, you come in here and you try to, you're, you are going to have a hell of a time trying to get this. This knife should be, this sheath should be like this maybe. So you can at least grab it with a couple fingers and pull it out. But it's functional. It keeps the knife where it needs to be. So we'll maybe make a leather sheath for it one day. But until then, it just goes in a backpack and I'm not worried about it. But anyways, this is four knives, four skinning knives that I've done reviews on and stuff and didn't get much love. Let's see if we can get some more, some more love on this one. Thanks for watching.